Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt, and welcome back to Farlands Bust. We can see the wolfie's feet poking through the top of the hidey hole there. This is a strange little arrangement that we came up with at the end of the last episode, but yes, welcome back to Farlands Bust. It is episode 493. Uh, let's see, how do we get out of here? Just like that. Woof, woof. Multiple dogs, multiple dogs in the area. Let us secure the hidey hole. Whoops, with sand and get pushed around by dogs. All right, that's fun. Uh, let's get rid of some of our miscellaneous inventory here and continue west to the Far Lands here on Thursday, August 13th, 2015. We have raised $281. For Child's Play Charity this season, simply in the past week. Barely a week, not even a week yet. This is the third episode of Season 6 of our $60,000 goal, so I do appreciate everybody who continues donating to charity at farlandsorbust.com. That's much appreciated, and uh, also along with that, I kind of mentioned at the la in the last episode, you can ask a question that I'll get to in an episode of Farlands or Bust, and I've, I've certainly got some questions here. Uh, but I do, with with certainty, want to mention that the audio-only podcast edition, that is to say, the same exact thing you're listening to right now, if you're listening on YouTube, uh, but no video, simply the audio in MP3, what these, these young whippersnappers with their, their little iPod nanos... Uh, iPods? Did they don't even make iPods anymore, do they? Do they still make the little tiny iPod, or is it all just uh, all about iPhones? Uh, and stuff like that. I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? We we, we, we care little about the, the Apple infrastructure, uh, but available in, in MP3 format is each episode of Farlands Bust. You can get that at flob, F-L-O-B, dot podbean, dot com. There you will also find a link to the feed, the, the RSS feed, if you have a a particular podcast program of choice on your device, then that will subscribe you to the feed to get automatically updated, or you can just do so right there at that website. There's a fancy... I didn't realize this when I set it up, but there's a version of the that Podbean website. Look at that large, empty, cavernous cavern. I want to investigate really quick. Oh. Well, that's less impressive now that I've placed a torch there. I thought it was a big, empty room, but it's really... I cannot break that torch for the life of me. There, we, we shall keep it dark, uh, and it shall be forever shrouded in mystery, and we will not talk of the fact that it is actually just a, an unimpressive little shadow there on the side of the mountain. Uh, but yeah, there's a really cool, uh, like a, a mobile version of the site uh, that just links you directly to being able to listen or download the, the podcast from your, your mobile device, your phones and whatnots, uh, which is really cool. Uh, and yeah, each of uh, the previous two episodes are up there, and this episode I'm, I'm trying to schedule the, the publishing of the podcast at the same time as the publishing of the YouTube video. Uh, so hopefully that works out for everybody, and uh, I was a little bit worried about how many people would be checking it out, but it turns out uh, we had almost 600... So I'm not sure if that, that means plays or simply views like, of the the, the 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 player or something like that, but 600. 600 on the last episode, 492. Uh, about 400 of the first episode, simply because that didn't go live as the episode did, so I could understand that. So, hey, that there's, there's at least some measurable demand for such a thing, so I will continue. It will continue unabated. Unabated? Is that the word I'm looking for? Uninterrupted. Unchallenged. Un... Zombified. There's a zombie over there, that's why I said that. Uh, so yeah, flob.podbean.com. Still trying to figure out if and how or if I ever want to bother with the iTunes thing. I was mentioning during the... I held a live stream on Monday. Uh, later than usual, but from the Mindcrack server, Mindcrack Monday, and I was... I was uh, proclaiming my frustrations with uh, iTunes. I think I mentioned this last time. I'm getting the... the uh, the podcast up on iTunes, and uh, not so much so that you guys can download it from iTunes, because obviously you can just download it from the website or download it from the feed or whatever. 
But I think it would be interesting to get indexed on the iTunes podcasts store to see if there's any maybe we could find some new uh, Farlanders through the podcasts. I'm not sure how specifically one would accidentally happen upon the Farlands or Bus podcasts. Perhaps searching keywords, Minecraft or uh, video games or, or, or something like that. But but I don't know. Perhaps perhaps not. Uh, that that's the only. That's the only, uh, that's the only main reason I would be interested in getting on, on the iTunes store, but we'll figure something out. I've received much help, much, uh, information from you alls. Uh, still doesn't help me out too much because my problem is, is apparently it, it's, it is unique and unsolvable based on everything I've received. Well, you should just do this, Kurt J. Mac. Uh, that is exactly what I've just done and I still receive the errors, etc., etc. Oh well, that's neither here nor there. It's over there, but it's not here nor nor there. It's just somewhere else. Whoop, I've fallen in some water. And uh we'll 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 continue regardless. Regardless. Speaking of little daily annoyances, I I <laughs> I sent out a tweet yesterday. I said uh, uh a family uh, fun Tuesday night activity is cleaning out the clogged drain stopper on your your shower <laughs> in your shower uh, the tub shower it's a i've got a combo tub shower really fancy this is futuristic stuff they've they've included both the functionality of a tub and a shower in my bathroom but uh very slow draining pretty much since i've been here uh and i thought maybe it was the drain or something like that but no no something far simpler you just gotta disassemble deassemble unassemble take apart the the stopper which is a a mystery in and of itself. You've got this stopper, little plunger thing that you either press down to stop it to to let the 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 tub fill up or pull up and theoretically if there's nothing in the way, uh, the water would flow down. Uh, but there's no discernible screws or little uh, attachment points for which to remove this thing. So I had to look up the many uses of YouTube how to remove the stopper in your shower drain. Just search that on YouTube. There are many videos, many, many videos. Careful, Wolfie. Uh, supposedly for the many, many different types of shower drain stoppers that exist. And uh, mine was an obscure kind, so it took a few times to figure out what the heck I was doing. But with a little bit of uh, force and elbow grease and uh, breaking of some screwdrivers, uh, I was able to get it off and, and found a, a treasure trove of the previous <laughs> occupants strands of hair uh, dental floss apparently somebody flosses their teeth in the shower which is seemingly something I would imagine only a psychopath does but that was an interesting find uh, and other just random gross disgusting evidence of humanity uh, in the uh, the shower drain and and now the the water flows freely But that was a, a gross time to be had and then afterwards. I'm like oh, I should have made a vlog of this <laughs> I could have been one of those hundreds of videos on YouTube as to how to Unclog your shower drain stopper and it's all right there in the stopper. It seems like a very significant design flaw If I may go on a tangent if I am not already on a tangent a tangent of a tangent if you will tangentception uh, seems like a design flaw that everybody seems to be having problems with with hair and gunk clogging up their drain at at the uh, the drain stopper. The drain stopper seems to uh, do nothing about stopping hair and gunk from preventing water going through it. So maybe maybe it's time in this the twenty first century we reconsider the. Uh, the engineering behind the drain stopper uh, to, to try to prevent such things in the future. I don't know, there's many, there's many little items like that where it's like, maybe we should rethink this. Uh, I had a similar, similar situation at my previous abode, but with the, uh, the faucet in the tub would drip. And I don't know if you've ever disassembled a, uh, a shower head. Along with the pl oh, this is a neat area. Ooh, look at that little opening through there, and we got some nice 
uh, overhangs over here. Let's go, let's make an elevated hidey hole in the central, the center of this magical land. But there's a whole bunch of really convoluted and confusing parts and pieces on the inside of like the actual handle, you know, the thing you turn on and off the uh, uh, your shower and or tub with. All these parts that are kind of just floating there, they're not like screwed in, they're kind of just held in via tension. <laughs> and I'm like, this is little O-rings that get all cracked and, and broken over over short periods of time. And I'm like, this this doesn't seem like the most appropriate method for getting water to come out of a faucet, but but all right, it seems like it might be time to simplify this design. I don't know, I'm sure there's a reason. There's some plumbing reason why there's a $40 piece of plastic that you gotta replace in there when your when your tub drain starts to leak. But anyway, I digress. Let's go to sleep and continue on in the morning. <laughs> And awakeness. That's what it was called. It's called the mixer. There's a mixer. There's a little plastic piece with two two holes in it that mixes the cold and the hot water. And then there's another plastic piece that attaches to the handle that turns and like there's little o-rings and it's all just flush mounted to the to the to the whole piping in the back, which if anything, I was very concerned that I would have to be tearing apart walls to replace the piping. But oh, hi! <laughs> I've I've ventured too far into the shadows. There's a creeper waiting for me. It, it was just a very I like open the thing up. I'm like, why is it like this? Why is this the way things are done? Uh, but anyway, but anyway, I'm I'm not I'm not a, not a plumber. I'm not a professional accredited union <laughs> union belonging to plumber or or any sort of thing like that although now now that I've done it I'm like okay now I know if ever if ever I have a leaky faucet in the future I know what to do I am I am experienced in the convoluted methods of shower faucet repair Ugh. I'm also experienced in installing ceiling fans ceiling fans for whatever reason, I was elected the ceiling fan installer of the household and uh, just figured it out on my own on the first attempt. And then from there, whenever a ceiling fan needed to be installed on a on a ceiling mount, I can't install the mount itself, but there's a pre-existing place for it to be installed. I can install a ceiling fan like none other. And I can mostly uh, mostly avoid electric shock, but <laughs> it's just like weird little things that you pick up, uh, little little skills you pick up throughout your life. Very very strange indeed. Speaking of skills, no wait, I actually have no segue here. I was trying to segue into uh, into uh, a question here, but I don't. Let me look down. No, I don't have any. Don't have any questions about skills or or day to day home repair. But I do have a question from Lynn Agar. Uh, what is your current ISP? Did you escape Comcast's reign of terror? I have! <laughs> By moving cross-country, you too can escape Comcast's reign of uh, monopolistic terror. Uh, only to be entered into another mono monopolistic monopoli <laughs> mon <laughs> uh, monopolistic uh, ISP. It seems to be the, the goings-ons, but I'm with another ISP, but really it's got the same sort of monopoly over the, the current area I'm in. Uh, better better speeds, though, although if those of you who have watched my live streams, you know that there's some, some weird finickiness going on whenever I live stream. Almost almost to a T, after the first hour, my upload speed just tanks. My upload connection absolutely just tanks. Uh, and I have to wait like a half hour and then it comes back. It, it seems it seems like it's a little bit fishy. There's a little bit of fishiness there, like, hmm, maybe they don't maybe there's some hmm, this this guy's using a constant upload bitrate for over an hour. Let's uh Let's mess with his uh, connection there. I don't. I don't know. Seems a little bit suspicious. Uh, it might 
be something technical. It, uh, there's a very low chance it could be something on my router's end, but uh, uh, something with the connection or the line or something, I don't know. But other than that, I've been all right with it. But yes, I did I did uh, leave Comcast's Reign of Terror. No real uh, hubbub. If I think I mentioned this before. There, there was a, 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 a viral story that went live about somebody who tried to cancel their Comcast. Careful, Wolfie. And, uh, you know, they got forwarded to the retention specialist who, nay, refused to let them out of their uh, service for, for Comcast. Uh, didn't have any of that problem. Basically just said, I'm moving to an area without Comcast, and that pretty much shut them up. And uh, I was able to uh, continue on to uh, to cancel that. Of course, I got all the confirmation numbers and, and stuff like that, and uh, made sure I had all the receipts and returned all the equipment specifically and blah 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 but no longer no longer under the realm of the Comcast uh, let's see here second question from Linaggar seeing as you did not like the Tomb Raider reboot could you perhaps play the Lara Croft spin-off series Guardian of Light Temple of Osiris well Temple of Osiris isn't that mobile only or am I confused I do have Guardian of Light uh, maybe a co-op with another Mindcracker. I got that. I think I got that free for buying the newest Tomb Raider game. But, uh, I don't know. I, those top-down kind of... What what kind of game is that like? It's kind of like Diablo-esque top-down games. Not really my favorite. Not, you know, it's really not a genre I've ever gotten into. I've heard good things, like it's a decent game, kind of, but, uh... I don't know, just not a genre, just not a format of game I ever really got into, and I just kind of am kind of unimpressed. Maybe unimpressed is the wrong word. Un unattracted to. I'm not it, I'm not drawn to that format of vidge game, so I, I wouldn't hold out hope for that. I am trying to, if I can ever figure out how to record from my PlayStation properly. I would like to, spoiler alert, I was trying to make it a surprise. I was just one day going to upload a video. Kurt plays Tomb Raider 1 on the PlayStation, but then I had a whole bunch of problems uh, with the converter and recording and stuff like that. I'm still trying to figure it out, but uh, yeah, I would like to actually go back and play the original, original, original Tomb Raider in, in all of its, like, Minecraft quality textures and, and square angles and whatnot. Um, that's something I would like to do. Uh, if not, I would like to go back. I did start, if you look way back in the history of my channel, I actually started playing uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary, which was the modern, modern as in like 2006 or whatever, modern uh, day remake of the first Tomb Raider. Uh, I was playing through that, but I kind of stopped. I can't remember why I stopped uh, playing that. Uh, that. That was way back in the early days of old Kurt J. Max channel. I don't even know if those are still up there, even, to be honest with you. They might be. But if I do restart that, that's something I can definitely record. Uh, I would remove the old series, not to confuse, and I would just start over. But I would like to play the actual original original. Uh, that, that would be fun. Uh, so, yeah. Certainly, certainly, hopefully not the end of Tomb Raider on the series. And, and yes, the next Tomb Raider game is going to be coming out, and it is an Xbox One exclusive for a little bit for for the holiday. Uh, people will have to, on the PC, wait for 2016 to play that. And I do have the Xbox One, and I don't am not using it for anything right now, so despite my reservations, I might might play the next Tomb Raider game. But, in in the snarky, angry, very critical fashion that I played the first one. So, you know, let, let that be uh, something that is known by all. <laughs> because many people were not happy with how I treated the last game. <laughs> but I'm going to be doing the same on this one. Because it seems like a lot of the same. Of all the gameplay, there was recently some, ooh, here's the first 10 minutes of gameplay video or something like that. Uh, seems kind of light on the Tomb Raider and, and heavy on the uh, Uncharted and or uh, 
Uh, what's the other game? Third person stealthy cover shooter-y type of game. There's another one that's out there that it's really Assassin's Creed-ish style action gameplay uh, that has nothing to do with the old, the Tomb Raider of old. But anyway, I've, I've, I've gone far back enough on that. Uh, but thanks for the, the donation and the questions there, Linakgar. Uh, an anonymous donation. Oh, this was the question that I accidentally only copied and pasted uh, the last half of. So here, here's the entire question from an anonymous donor. What do you think the world will be like in 50 or 100 years now from now, technologically, trend-wise, socially, assuming we continue on a healthy plan of growth and improvement? Continue on a healthy plan of growth and improvement? That would, that would be on the assumption that we currently are on a healthy plan of growth and improvement. And if, if current events are to be of any indication, we are, we are not at all. Uh, but let's say 50 to 100 years, it's, you, you can't say. There's no, I'm no, I mean, there are people, uh, prof professors, professors, professor, gather around everyone. Um, good news, everyone. No, that's the, that's the term. Good news, everyone. Um, you know, futurist type of people who kind of try to estimate where the future will take us uh, or what technology will do. Uh, I don't know, you can't tell. I mean, just like you couldn't say six years ago, six years, even six years, even in the span of six years, ten years. Let's, okay, let's make it around ten years. Uh, 2005, YouTube didn't exist, did it? Because YouTube started in 2006. YouTube didn't exist. Could anybody even in 2005 have estimated what YouTube would become? When, you know, what would become of, of Twitter and even just the internet in general? Back in 2005, we were all still just annoyed with pop-up ads and... Uh, oh, look at this tower! That's a neat little tower. Let's explore that tower in the morning. Uh, you know, so 50 years. Good gravy. You know, I'm, I'm looking at uh, my nephew Goober, who we made a Minecraft video with a couple years ago. Uh, when he goes through through high school and, and graduates in the, the 2020s, what's the internet? What's the world? What are the jobs that are going to be available to him if if I graduated in 2000 and, and now look at, you know, bleh, I didn't even have a computer in 2000. It's craziness. Uh, a personal computer. The family had a computer, but I didn't have, like, my own computer. Now I've got this giant phone that can't fit in my pocket. Uh, but anyway, let's go to sleep. Let's take a look at this cool, uh, what are those called? We'll take a look at this cool, what is it called, in the morning. And, uh, what is it called, Ness? I'm gonna have Wolfie sit here, and this is the part of the show where the podcast listeners are going to be in the dark. But it's almost, oh, it is, it's like symmetrical. This is man-made. We have we have stumbled upon a, an obel, obelisk. Oh, oh, is that what they're called? Those big towers that are in uh, ancient Egypt. There we go. Now I've made it symmetrical. Wow, that's madness. It's like a ob, 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 obelisk. Ob, uh, a tower. A large, a large tower. I want to I want to kind of just make this wait how's this look it goes two over I just want to make it perfect there we go am I right and then like that yes ooh this is crazy it's like a it's a giant uh, solar clock what are those called gosh I'm like at a loss for words today they're called sundials. Solar clock. <laughs> uh, a, a light and shadow time telly thingy. <laughs> That's neat. I like this this thing. This is uh, one of these just weird random Minecraft beta ones. I'm sure something like this might happen in current versions of the game, but uh, we're going to take a picture for posterity's sake. The natural o obelisk... Uh, obs, obs, but look, I'm pronouncing this wrong. I'm, I, I can see the word written down, but I don't know where the syllables are located. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how to say it, but that's neat. I like it. Good times. All right, let's grab Wolfie and kind of go around these cacti. Uh, so long story short, I have no idea what to expect. 
in 50 years time uh, I, I presume whatever it is I'm going to be you know like I'm thinking of like my grandparents how they you know they don't use cell phones or well or computers or, or anything like that so I'm assuming whatever technology or, or social advancement at that time I'm gonna be kind of like oh you dang kids and you're you're dang things I can't I can't I can't plug my brain into that I don't have the interface I, I wasn't born with that implant, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's that's all I can imagine. I certainly hope we have more things figured out than than we do right now. What with pollution and, and global warming and uh, social issues and and whatnot, but I'm perhaps not the most optimistic when it comes to that. I mean, in, in, as far you know, perhaps ooh, hopefully ooh, we've we've landed people on uh, Mars or or at least Phobos or, or the moons of Mars or we've sent you know we've built giant telescopes that can actually image image the uh, exoplanets that we're just now in these recent decades finding uh, through through other methods that that you know that sort of stuff is what I'm excited about. But the other stuff you can only you can only guess and fathom, not even imagine what's gonna happen. We've got a donation from Fortain. Fortain asks some questions about Eva. Eve oh, I shouldn't have said that so loud. Just, huh? What? Huh? <laughs> you rang? Uh, any particular treats she enjoys? The ones that I purchase for her. <laughs> She's not really particular. Some dogs are kinda nuts about food and treats. She likes food. Uh, she likes treats. You say the word treats and she knows where to go near the pantry, where they are. Uh, kind of just get the little training treats. Uh, got these like bacon ones more recently. That she seems to uh, in enjoy. Uh, just try to stay away from the hard, crunchy ones. Those just kind of worry me. I was told by the veterinarian only to feed treats that are... If you can break it with your hand, then it should be fine. But there's like some of those really like hard treats that just... Like I'm afraid she's gonna choke on them or, or break a... chip a tooth with them or something like that. I don't know why they even make them if they're not recommended by vets. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, none, none in particular. Uh, through Amazon, I got some. There were these little like peanut butter or gingerbread men that were soft and chewy, uh, which were they're all like gluten free and naturals and whatnot. And like a, I don't I don't think my dog cares about the gluten or not. But uh, but yeah, not, she's not really uh, treat motivated per se. Uh, I have slowly started to teach to give paw when I give treats. She's slightly lifting. She doesn't know to put her paw in my hand. She just lifts up her like left arm like an inch off the ground. So that's that's slowly becoming a thing. Asking for a for a paw or like a handshake to get a treat. Uh, but otherwise, oh, careful, Wolfie. Speaking of speaking of treats, let's give Wolfie some some treats. Are these soft pork bones? <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Any good dog parks? near your place, or more of an around-the-block walker. Attempted a few dog parks. There have been incidents. Like I said, Eva is not... She's not, like, aggressive towards other dogs. Loves people. Like, people for days. Uh, any stranger or any other human, you know, little nub tail wags like nuts, and it's, oh, another person to play fetch with, or whatever. Uh, but other dogs... Um, she can be fine with and gets along with, um, but mostly either ignores, uh, or if it does, she doesn't like dogs that are, uh, like, forward dogs, not even aggressive dogs, just forward dogs, dogs that bark, uh, or dogs that run at her or something, and uh, even in, in excitement, a little... The hairs on her back flare up, and, and that sends a, the wrong signal to the other dog, and then much much barking and nipping ensues. So that that have been a few incidents at at the dog park. So we don't frequent there too often. Uh, if there are times when when there's a less less uh, crowds there, maybe perhaps. But uh, no, uh, you know, she enjoys walks. 
but even then, it doesn't seem like that's the thing she likes to do to get energy out, you know, walks or whatever. Uh, she'll start... At first, she'll, like, really start tugging, and, and if you start running, she'll start galloping, and that's quite the workout. Uh, but by the end of a walk, she's kind of dragging behind and being like, this is boring, I thought we were going to go play frisbee or something. It's, it's fetch and frisbee is... she just runs like a bullet to get the frisbee. And yeah, the next question you're asking about frisbee versus ball. She'll chase either, but I think frisbee is preferred because it floats and she can do leaping grabs, catch it out of the sky and whatnot, is the thing she enjoys doing. So probably frisbee. Probably frisbee. Uh, it was pretty funny. I put the frisbee, got one of those soft frisbees. Uh, coming back, put it up, there's a little ledge uh, at the entryway uh, of the house and put it up there. It's out of reach, it's like above waist high on a, on a human. Uh, but blah blah blah, just minding my own business, and then suddenly she comes back with the frisbee. I'm like, what, how did you get that? What sort of, what sort of crazy, you know, uh, Mission Impossible style wall jumping did you do to get that off the ledge? Uh, but no, no, no frisbee indoors. That's an outdoor toy because she gets kind of nuts about it, and like I said, tries to run, grab the sprint jumping out of out of midair kind of jumps. Uh, so definitely, probably frisbee. Uh, chicken, beef, or seafood, what's for dinner? Uh, I have just currently bought the chicken. It took a while. This is a thing. As somebody who never owned a dog, it's it's the, uh, the choice paralysis. Finding the right dog food for your dog, or what you can imagine is the right dog food. Uh, she seems to really not be too particular uh, and, and was able to change dog foods without incident. Uh, but uh, I went with the chicken, and I, I decided on uh, the brand called Blue Wilderness. It's apparently like, oh, it's more of the grain, or not less of the grains, excuse me, and more more meat, protein heavy uh, with all this stuff and, and more natural stuff. Uh, there's this, there's even the, like, our, our, the vet told us about this website that reviews all these dog foods and talks about like, oh, if the first ingredient is like wheat and stuff like that, that's no good. Uh, if the first ingredient is just chicken, that might not be good either because they weigh the ingredients before they're processed. So if it's just plain old chicken, then they're also weighing the bones and the water uh, uh, that's that's in there. So by the time it actually ends up in the food, it's actually less of an ingredient than when it was started. You have to find... it has to be chicken meal. Chicken meal is the pre-processed solid, uh, whole chicken, if that's the first, or whatever meal. Ooh! Sand. Sand fall. Let's, let's watch it. Come on. Woo! Woo! Hey, that, that's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, so I ended up deciding on the, the Blue Wilderness chicken. They also have, like, beef and bison, and salmon, and there was some other weird one. Was there like, a, I don't think there was, I'm sure there's duck too, but I'm like, let's keep it simple. Chicken, chicken is a, is a, is a readily available food source. Let's, let's stick with the chicken. And she seems to like it. Uh, you can add water to it to make it like soft and gravy-y. Uh, but uh, the vet actually re recommended science diet. But looking at the ingredients and what that review site was it, it seems I'd almost fathom that maybe vets kind of I don't know maybe there's some sort of kickback deal <laughs> that vets get by recommending science diet because oh number one vet recommended oh hell's blazes literally hell's blazes we've we've made our hidey hole in in the blazes of hell here I'm looking at a lava pit that is a bit of a security concern. I wonder... Uh, I don't have any. I was gonna say, I wonder if I could have glass and be illuminated by the lava. Oh, heck. All right. Um, we, we might be able to do this. I just need to make it safe for myself. Yeah, all right. There's no way I can fall in there. We will be uh, illuminated by the light of, of liquid hot magma. Let's give a, a torch for Wolfie as the sun has set. Let's carefully block off the hidey hole here. Yes, that's not bright enough at all for for me to use, but we'll 
We'll figure this out. This is, this is interesting. This is a, this is something new. I don't think we've ever made a hidey hole in a lava pit before. This was purely accidental. Oh lord, that's 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 too close. Danger close. Interesting. All right. <laughs> oh gosh, sizzle. That was just a block. That was just a block. Not anything important. Don't drop your diamonds or your golden apple over the the threshold here. Uh, yeah, we are going to need an actual light, but otherwise, I think this this isn't this is an in, in oh wait actually, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like spawn in the lava, am I? <laughs> uh, this is becoming less and less uh, something I want to do. Let's cover it up just a little bit more, just so none of these available blocks turn into my spawn point. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that should be all right, I think. Uh, and as long as I just place my bed here, yeah, you'll only you'll only spawn on the angles to the bed. Yeah, let's do that too, just in case. All right. Well, it's interesting but scary. But we are we are living we are living in a volcano here tonight. Uh, let's make the beds. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it it took me a while to try to decide. On, on what type of food to get. It's also kind of expensive. I ended up with the expensive food brand, but she's been fine with it. Uh, that's another thing. I, I swear I read somewhere that you're supposed to, every so often, maybe every year or every six months, you're supposed to kind of, it's a good idea to change your dog's uh, food to keep, you know, otherwise eating the same thing over and over and over kind of makes their digestive system too relaxed or, or kind of a too much of a of a single source to deal with or something. I don't know. I could be wrong. Okay, well, this is a bad place to have made my uh, hidey hole because <laughs> the bed just went aflame. <laughs> Alrighty then. Woo! This bed's on fire. You know what I'm talking about. Let's put out the fire here. Although, I think... Yeah, that's the problem, actually. All right. Well, that was an experiment. It was an experiment, a failed experiment at that. Is there still lava underneath here? No, there isn't. All right, so that should be safe. <laughs> that was funny. Whoops, I actually just pressed F, so it's going to be foggy when we wake up in the morning. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, what is this sudden brightness all about? Oh, the bed's on fire. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, well now I got to actually Make sure nothing spawns out here. All right. Well, this was a waste of torches. There's a little bit of lava in the distance. Just a little bit of lava. Right. Right. All right. Well. <laughs> oh man, the things that happen on Far Lands of Bust, everybody. No other series can provide such unexpected and crazy entertainment. Am I right or am I right? Oh, that's too close still. You're too close! Yeah, let's put that in the middle of the room. All right, are we all right? Are we not gonna burst into random flames here? Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to end the episode. Episode 493 of Far Lands or Bust. Keep moving so you don't start on fire. Uh, I do appreciate you watching and all these questions and all the donations. Like I said, we're already up to $281. Farlandsabust.com is where you can donate to Child's Play Charity, getting toys, books, games to kids in hospitals around the world. That's what Child's Play Charity does. I think that wraps that up. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kurt. I will see you next time.
ob, 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 obelisk, ob, uh, a tower. 